one of the most useful machines in organic chemistry, the infrared spectrometer. The IR spectrometer is used to help determine the structure of a compound. The sample is exposed to IR radiation, and when that energy matches a form of vibration coming from the molecule, then that energy is absorbed. Certain absorption frequencies indicate the presence of certain functional groups. Analysis of these energy peaks can lead to a conclusion about the substance being analyzed. To begin, you need to go over to the desiccator and carefully slide the top off. Inside the desiccator, you'll need to grab the salt discs, which should be wrapped in some white tissue paper. So take those out and put them down on the felt, carefully uh, unwrap each one individually. And after you have them both out on the felt, you're going to need to give them a little bit of a cleaning. And to do this, what you do is you take a salt disc and you slide it along the felt in a figure eight motion. And you're going to do that a few times, then flip it over and do the same thing on the opposite side. And you're going to do this for both salt discs. You should now have two clean salt discs ready to use in the IR machine. So take your two clean salt discs and place them carefully together. Walk them over to the IR machine and put them into the metal slot and make sure that the, they are situated in a stable position and close the lid. Now click on the Spectrum software on the computer and the username will be FTIR user and the password is organic. Click OK and wait for it to load. The next step is to do a baseline scan. So you're going to click scan in the top right corner and under name you're going to type the name of whatever um, lab activity you're doing and then you're going to click start. What you're doing here is essentially zeroing the machine and providing it with a baseline. So it's accounting for any impurities that might be on your discs that you weren't able to get off and it's going to know exactly what kinds of new chemicals you put on the disc to be analyzed. And as you can see the graph starts to appear and it's going to fluctuate a little bit and once it slows down um, then it's safe to go on to the next step once it pretty much remains constant. Go back over to the IR machine and open the lid and take out your salt discs. Separate the two of them and set each one on the felt so that you can begin to prepare your sample. Before scanning the IR, you first need to pick your solution. For this experiment, we decided to use ethanol. So you take your syringe, get the ethanol, and then you close the flask, put the lid back on, and then you'll carry your syringe over to the IR. After you have your ethanol, you then bring it over to your salt disc. You put the liquid on the salt disc. Wait! Make sure you never put water on the salt discs as it'll dissolve them, and you may get a nasty visit from Terrence the Lab Abuse Koala. Typically it's either one or two drops. In this case, we did one drop. You want to aim for the middle of the circle so that when you put the two together, it's in the center so that it doesn't fall off of the edges whenever you put them together with one another. And then, once you put them together like that, you open up the IR machine, and then you put them in on top in the metal thing, and you want to make sure that it's they're sturdy so they won't fall. And then once you do that, you close the IR, and you press scan. You've already scanned it once for the background check, but now you're scanning to see what the product is. After you scan the ethanol, you'll see your graph pop up. But before your graph pops up, a little sign will pop up that says accept or reject because it says that um, some levels are very high. You press accept, otherwise it'll erase what you, the results that were gathered. And so after you press accept, a graph will show up. 
It's sometimes hard to tell from the graph whether or not it's the product that you wanted, so you press search results, which is up in the top corner, and whenever you press search results, it will pop up a little screen that has the names of certain things that are found in the product that you scanned. The number next to each substance that's listed represents the correlation of your graph to the actual accepted graph of that substance. And the last thing you're going to want to do is print out your results and then log off of the computer. Once you have your graphs of the ethanol in this case, then it's time to take the salt disks out of the IR system carefully, close the lid, and then you bring the salt disks, you separate the salt disks and you bring them over to the green mat where you then do the figure eights to clean the salt disks. Next you're going to take the now clean salt disks and wrap them up in the protective tissue paper and after they're both wrapped up you're going to place them carefully back into the desiccator and close the lid.